Hi, my name is uh, Dr. Michael Bolaños. I'm a general surgery resident here at Duke University Medical Center, and uh, today I will be discussing soft tissue sarcomas with you. Today, uh, some of the objectives that we're going to be discussing are, number one, to understand the etiology and classification of soft tissue sarcomas. Uh, secondly, to understand the clinical presentation of a soft tissue sarcoma and how to properly diagnose them. Additionally, we need to understand the intraoperative and perioperative management of soft tissue sarcomas. And lastly, uh, we'll briefly touch on the staging and prognostic factors of uh, soft tissue sarcomas. So as in most things, we need to discuss the etiology. Uh, soft tissue sarcomas have a very diverse etiology. Um, they're largely derived from mesodermal elements, including muscle, cartilage, connective tissue, and adipose tissue. Like most types of tumors, uh, sarcomas are actually described from tissue for which they arise, such as a leiomyosarcoma uh, is a uh, sarcoma that's derived from, from smooth muscle. Uh, liposarcoma uh, is a sarcoma that would be derived from uh, adipocytes and fat cells. And a rhabdomyosarcoma would be a uh, sarcoma, for example, derived from uh, other types of muscle. Uh, many of these sarcomas are thought to arise de novo, meaning uh, that they have no uh, clearly defined etiology. There are some predisposing conditions and risk factors. Some of them I've outlined, such as viral exposure, uh, for example, the uh, human immunodeficiency virus, uh, which may lead to Kaposi sarcoma. Um, there are also genetic predisposing factors, such as uh, uh, neurofibromatosis and Lee Fraumeni syndrome, uh, which can give rise to other types of uh, sarcomas. Um, there are exposure risks, uh, such as uh, exposure to radiation or other types of chemicals, such as PVC or arsenic, uh, leading to angiosarcomas. And then other conditions, um, one that um, you may see frequently would be chronic lymphedema, which would lead to a um, lymphangiosarcoma. Um, <clears throat> the distribution of sarcomas are uh, fairly heterogeneous. Uh, the majority are found in extremities, and as you can uh, see here on uh, this uh, graphic, uh, this is a uh, table that was taken from a study done by them, uh, or published in the American College of Surgeons back in 1987, which uh, is very uh, widely used in the literature. Uh, that shows you know, a large percentage, 46.4% uh, of these uh, sarcomas in adults uh, can be found in lower extremities and a good majority of them also uh, being found in the trunk and upper extremities. Uh, as you can see, uh, you know, the head and neck comprise approximately 9 to 10% and the mediastinum is a very small percentage of, uh, of these uh, sarcomas. The most common soft tissue sarcoma uh, that you may see uh, is known as a malignant fibrohistiosarcoma. And the most common soft tissue sarcoma in children is a uh, childhood rhabdomyosarcoma. Uh, the clinical presentation of a uh, sarcoma is actually widely described as an asymptomatic mass. You know, this is of note because, you know, many patients will present um, with a sarcoma and, and oftentimes they stated that it, uh, you know, arose as an asymptomatic mass and just continued to grow. You know, oftentimes these uh, tumors can cause mass effects, uh, particularly, for example, if they're uh, intraperitoneal, they may cause a bowel obstruction. They may also cause gastrointestinal bleeds. Um, and some of the uh, sarcomas that arise in <clears throat> extremities and other areas with large neurovascular bundles can also cause uh, neurologic uh, deficits. So it's important to understand the diagnostic evaluation of a patient uh, that you may suspect a uh, sarcoma in. You know, sarcomas are essentially fairly rare. However, a detailed history and physical examination uh, is all obviously always the uh, best place to begin. You know, inquiring as to a patient's associated symptoms, which unfortunately are often absent um, with sarcomas, is uh, helpful, you know, if they've had, uh, for example, a um, GI bleed, um, if, uh, if they've noticed any uh, increased abdominal distension or any lumpy masses on their extremities that uh, have continued to grow, which have possibly, sometimes may, may cause pain, but uh, like I said previously, uh, are usually uh, asymptomatic. If a mass is identified, it's uh, very important to distinguish as to when, when uh, the mass was identified and how fast it's grown. 
some sarcomas are more aggressive than others and, and can grow uh, fairly quickly versus uh, a benign lipoma, for example, that may have gradually grown and just kind of plateaued and not continue to grow anymore um, for some time. Uh, some of the differentials uh, among sarcomas would include uh, lipomas, you know, other benign things. And then you also have other malignant tumors such as malignant melanomas or other types of carcinomas that can arise on the extremities of the trunk. Briefly discussing uh, the imaging techniques uh, associated with diagnosing sarcomas, probably the MRI would be the uh, gold standard imaging technique for evaluation of uh, soft tissue masses uh, involving the extremities, head and neck, and the trunk particularly. A CT scan is another imaging technique that uh, probably has a higher use uh, for uh, sarcomas that uh, arise uh, intraperitoneally or retroperitoneally um, in the abdomen and so forth. And uh, lastly, plain films have uh, very little use uh, in the uh, evaluation of sarcomas. However, some literature states that it, it may be useful in determining pulmonary metastasis um, once a diagnosis of sarcoma has been made. Uh, however, a CT scan um, of the chest, for example, may be superior uh, for tumors that uh, are larger than 5 centimeters or other high-grade lesions. The uh, diagnosis of a sarcoma is essentially made by uh, performing a biopsy. There are several different types of biopsies uh, performed, uh, though they can be performed. Uh, however, a core needle tissue biopsy is uh, the preferred method uh, for initial evaluation of the soft tissue mass. These core needle tissue biopsies can be uh, CT guided or are also uh, done ultra, uh, under ultrasound guidance uh, in order to ensure accuracy. A lot of the uh, textbooks will describe an incisional biopsy. The prior method of choice, uh, this was widely used for the core needle tissue biopsy was introduced. Uh, however, it's usually performed now uh, when a core needle biopsy proves to be non-diagnostic. Several other uh, points should be made regarding an incisional biopsy. Uh, one, uh, this such biopsy should be performed as superficial to the mass as possible, and this uh, allows for the excision of the mass uh, to be performed should a diagnosis of the sarcoma be made. Another uh, important aspect of this technique would be to uh, perform uh, the biopsy with great care as to not disrupt the tissue planes or uh, create flaps uh, when doing so. And an important uh, point to discuss uh, also regarding this biopsy would be to provide adequate hemostasis once the biopsy has been performed uh, in order to prevent seeding or uh, tumor cells of the tumor cells via any formation of hematoma. And this is important to note because uh, sarcomas, unlike uh, many other cancers, uh, spread hematogenously uh, versus other cancers which uh, spread through uh, the lymphatic system. And lastly, uh, if an incisional biopsy uh, will be performed, uh, it should be performed by the uh, same surgeon who uh, would be planning to excise the mass should a diagnosis of sarcoma be made. The next type of biopsy to discuss would be an excisional biopsy, which is a biopsy that would be essentially be removing uh, the entirety of the tumor at once. Um, this may be useful in the setting of small tumors, uh, usually less than 5 centimeters. Uh, however, this should be performed when the diagnosis of sarcoma is low on the differential because this uh, may affect uh, future surgery should an ultimate diagnosis of sarcoma be made. There are other uh, approaches that can be performed, such as a transperitoneal approach, uh, and this is uh, primarily done uh, with uh, sarcomas that are found to be in the abdominal cavity, and uh, this usually allows for an M-block resection of uh, retroperitoneal sarcomas, for example, through a midline incision in the abdomen. Now briefly, I'd like to discuss some of the staging and prognostic factors of sarcomas. They're largely staged based on a modified uh, TNM criteria known as the GTNM criteria. The G stands for grading and this is uh, based on the histological findings uh, usually done on the biopsies. They're classified as being uh, well differentiated to undifferentiated. The T stage which obviously uh, corresponds to the tumor size is uh, largely based on uh, an index of greater than or less than five centimeters 
uh, or, addition, uh, or additionally uh, invasion of the uh, fascial planes. The end stage would be uh, the amount of nodal involvement uh, that can be seen. And this is uh, rare, as I stated previously, uh, in soft tissue sarcomas as they uh, tend to spread hematogenously. Uh, however, there are several subtypes that are more likely to involve nodes, uh, and these are usually rhabdomyosarcomas and uh, epithelial uh, sarcomas. And lastly, the uh, M stage, which would be the um, metastatic stage, unfortunately uh, is fairly high, uh, being seen in almost 25% of patients at the time of presentation. Most common site of metastasis with sarcomas are in the lungs. However, there are some sarcomas where uh, liver metastasis is also seen, specifically uh, retroperitoneal sarcomas. Lastly, uh, I'd like to briefly uh, talk about the uh, perioperative uh, chemotherapy and radiation uh, therapy options uh, that are available. When discussing uh, the chemotherapy, uh, chemotherapeutic options for uh, the treatment of sarcomas. It's worthy to note that uh, most of them are doxorubicin based. Uh, however, there are other options available. There uh, are also benefits of uh, possibly adjuvant and uh, neoadjuvant uh, therapeutic options for the treatment of uh, sarcomas. These largely have impacts on the uh, perioperative planning and the execution of the uh, removal of the tumor. Also, of note, there's a rather progressive treatment strategy known as a hyperthermic isolated limb perfusion, um, or HILP, which has shown to uh, have some benefit for patients um, with unresectable extremity sarcomas. Uh, this technique is primarily uh, done by cannulating both arterial and uh, venous supply uh, to the extremity and delivering the chemotherapeutic agents uh, in extremely high doses, much higher than uh, could be otherwise uh, administered. With respect to uh, radiation therapy, there may be some advantage to uh, preoperative radiation. Uh, this is uh, usually seen in sarcomas that are larger in size. Some literature states 10 centimeters as being that uh, index number. And lastly, there may also be a use for uh, postoperative radiation in the treatment of sarcomas. Uh, this is often seen in the setting of margins that may be indeterminate or almost negative. Many of the surgical texts refer to the uh, placement of surgical clips at the time of uh, excisional biopsies, for example, in order to uh, help guide radiation therapy postoperatively. And uh, lastly, there's also worth mentioning of brachytherapy, which is uh, which has been used in the treatment of prostate cancers, uh, for example. However, in the uh, treatment of sarcomas, uh, this usually involves a placement of catheters uh, in the tumor excision bed, where uh, iridium uh, can be administered uh, in very concentrated uh, doses in order to uh, help uh, shrink the tumor uh, postoperatively. This concludes my uh, presentation on soft tissue sarcomas. I wish you good luck in your studies and your futures in uh, becoming uh, physicians. Uh, here are my references if you'd like to uh, further uh, read on these topics. Thank you.